Hello. In this video, we would like to derive an expression for the normalization constant for a molecular orbital that is formed from a linear combination of atomic orbitals in a special case where we have a diatomic molecule. So let's assume that we have a diatomic molecule that's formed between two atoms, A and B. You can just kind of simply represent this diatomic molecule. <clears throat> Let's also call the atomic orbital that is found on A, A, and the atomic orbital that is found on B, and we'll call that B. Now, since the atomic orbitals are normalized, we can right away, right away, that A star A B tau is equal to 1, and that B star B D tau is also equal to 1. What does the linear combination of atomic orbitals look like in this case? Well, for the first video, we want to look at the case of a bonding orbital. So in that case, our atomic orbital is equal to A plus B. If that is true, then the complex conjugate, psi star, is going to be equal to A plus B, the quantity star, which is simply A star plus B star. We also need a constant in front of this, so if we want to um, do this, we have that n times psi star times n psi d tau. And since we want to normalize this wave function, this integral over all space has to be equal to 1. So, we need to determine, or what we want to determine, is the value of n such that this particular integral is true. And the first step, we want to write in explicit expressions for n times psi star. And since psi star itself is a star plus b star, n is simply a constant, so we can multiply through by that constant, and we get n a star plus n b star we know also that psi itself times n would be n a plus n b d tau and this is all equal to 1 we can combine several steps together pulling through the end, and what we end up getting is that n star times the, the quantity a star times a plus b star times b plus a star b plus b star a d tau is equal to 1. All we've done here is use the FOIL method and factored out the resulting n squares that would have arrived in each of the particular terms. Next, we can use the fact that the integral is a linear operator so that we can get a series of integrals. So we have n star n squared times a star a d tau plus n squared times b star b d tau plus 
n squared times a star b d tau plus n squared times b star a d tau and the sum is all equal to 1 because we're normalizing. We're going to combine several steps just to make the math easier here. One of the things we're going to do is just simply factor out the n squared on the left hand side. The second thing we're going to do is simply define an integral and this is the integral a star b d tau as the integral s. And by symmetry, we know that this integral has to be also equal to the integral b star a d tau. So each of these integrals we set to this value s. Once we do that, the left hand side here becomes n squared times the quantity a star a d tau plus the integral b star b d tau plus this is s this is s so we get 2s equals 1. Now further we know that a and b are each normalized atomic orbitals. One is an atomic orbital on A, and B is a normalized atomic orbital on B. Using the definition of normalized orbitals, we know that the integral of A star A d tau has to be equal to 1, and that the integral of B star B d tau also has to be equal to 1. So that makes the left-hand side equal to n squared. This is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 2s. And the entire expression is equal to 1. Truly, we know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So that the left-hand side here becomes n squared times 2 plus 2s is equal to 1. Next, we divide each side by 2 plus 2s. And we get that n squared is equal to 1 divided by 2 plus 2s. And immediately, that gives us that n, take the square root of each side, is equal to the square root of 1 or 2 plus 2s. As an alternate formulation, we can factor out a 2 in the denominator if we like. To get an equivalent expression, so we have the square root of 1 divided by 2 times the quantity 1 plus s. So we see that the normalization constant for the molecular orbital depends on the exact value of this integral s, which we call the overlap integral, and that would depend upon uh, how far apart A and B are, and the specific atomic orbitals A and B. One thing to notice here is that in many semi-empirical computational methods, we set the overlap integral S to be zero. And we can see immediately one of the benefits of doing this. Because if we set S to zero, then this coefficient simply becomes the square root of one over two. So that would make the coefficients always the same when we have a uh, linear combination of atomic orbitals for a diatomic molecule. So this is the case when we have a bonding orbital. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.